Best advice I've received, don't ever own anything that eats while you sleep. I'm Doug Andrew, and I'm going to reveal how to stop taxes and inflation from eating away at your hard-earned savings. Get ready. Uh, I love that saying. It was uh, taught to me by Dan Sullivan. So as mentioned, I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for nearly five decades. And one of my mentors uh, and very close friends is strategic coach Dan Sullivan. I met him in 1992 and uh, I was in his mastermind groups for over two decades and we became very close. And uh, he has a lot of words of wisdom. And he told us one day, don't ever own anything that eats while you sleep. Now, it's not only amusing, but most people immediately think, oh, uh, don't own a horse or animals that continue to eat while you sleep. Well, yes, but I took that saying uh, several steps further to what I did as a financial strategist. And so uh, I started clear back in 1974, helping people to optimize assets and minimize taxes, prepare for a comfortable retirement. And I quickly learned that there were three big dangers that cause most Americans to outlive their money because these dangers eat 24 seven at people's hard earned savings, especially during the golden years. And they eat it at such a fast pace that they run out of money. And so when Dan Sullivan shared that, I thought, wow, yeah, you don't want to ever own something that eats while you sleep taxes. Okay. Inflation market volatility, so to speak, uh, sort of happens 24 seven in a way. Yeah, I know the stock market isn't open. I'm talking about when you are vacationing, when you're not working, when you're not tending your investment accounts, you can lose money due to market downturns or inflation or taxes or whatever. So uh, the metaphor really is appropriate. So uh, as I go through and share with you uh, these dangers, if you have money in traditional IRAs or 401ks, okay, most people I think are duped into putting uh, pre-tax dollars or tax deductible contributions into IRAs and 401ks thinking or being told that they're going to be in a lower tax bracket when they retire. Now, folks, that has not been true or axiomatic now for more than 30 years. Uh, most people who save, the savers, are not in lower tax brackets when they retire, okay? Uh, I've hardly met anybody that is in a lower tax bracket when they retire if they were a saver. They're in as high or higher tax bracket than they ever were during their earning years, even school teachers, if they were saving in 401ks and 403bs and tax sheltered annuities and what have you. They uh, continue to defer but they're sort of going down the highway of life, trying to achieve the destination, let's say of financial independence. And they've sort of got one foot on the gas pedal and the other foot on the brake pedal. And they didn't know they were doing that. In other words, uh, they were socking away money on the gas pedal in a tax deferred IRA or 401k with pre-tax dollars. And the other foot was on the brake pedal. Uh, what was that? Uh, they were paying off or getting rid of their deductions, paying off their house. Uh, most people don't have those deductions in retirement. Uh, their children are out of the nest. If they move back home, you can't deduct them anymore. Uh, you're not contributing money to IRAs or 401ks anymore in retirement, so you don't have that deduction anymore. If you were a business owner uh, in retirement, you usually don't have those deductions anymore. And Congress, because of irresponsible spending and, and the printing of money, uh, they uh, keep raising taxes. So uh, we find that most people are in as higher, higher tax bracket during their golden years as they were during their earning years. And then they have this trap. And so they realized that was not the smartest way to go. It took the financial services industry until just about a decade ago to finally admit 
mm, that was the wrong advice. But they don't want to be sued because they're supposed to be fiduciaries looking out for your best interest. And yet they've known for 10, 15, 20 years, if they look at your statements, you're not going to be in a lower bracket. And they kept telling you to keep deferring. Uh, they weren't looking out for your best interest, in my opinion. So savvy people began to realize it's better to get the taxes over and done with sooner than later. And so they would convert to a Roth. In fact, when Roths were first introduced in 1997 by Senator Roth, it wasn't really for our benefit. It was for the government's benefit. The government was hard up for revenue. And uh, they said, you know what? We don't want to wait until people retire to start getting tax revenue off of their IRAs or 401ks. We need to somehow incentivize people uh, to get it out and taxed sooner than later. So uh, we'll waive the 10% penalty if they'll roll it over to a Roth and it will trigger tax and we'll get a windfall of revenue, which they did. They did it for them. I'm not saying it's not a good idea for some people, but uh, you're paying the tax and then you're enjoying tax-free access later on. If you've watched very many episodes on this channel, you'll learn that I've never owned an IRA or 401k, never will, because it's inferior. But I've never owned a Roth IRA or 401k and never will because it's also inferior. Roths only have two benefits. You fund a Roth with after-tax dollars, but it accumulates tax-free and you can access the money tax-free. Now, I've been able to do that with Max Funded Indexed Universal Life Insurance. Uh, actually now for over 108 years, it's been a sacred tax-free cash cow in the Internal Revenue Code. Did you know that? But when I put money into a Max Funded IUL and I structure it correctly and fund it properly, it is uh, what I call a laser fund. Laser is an acronym that stands for Liquid Asset Safely Earning Returns. And so when you do it properly, it knocks the socks off of a Roth because it accumulates your money tax-free. You can access it tax-free, but I can put in huge amounts, 300,000, 400,000 if I want. I don't have to, I can put in 30,000. I can make up the difference anytime I want in the future. You cannot put in that much money into a Roth. In fact, if you make too much money, you can't even qualify for a Roth. If I put in uh, 300,000 in a given year, and a month later, I need 200,000 back. I can access that. There's no 10% penalty by the IRS. With a Roth, you have to wait five years or till you're 59 and a half or whatever. No, you don't have those strings attached with uh, a max funded indexed universal life. But <clears throat> I can use indexing to participate when the market goes up and not lose when the market goes down. Uh, with most, most Roths, your money's in the market and you will lose as much as maybe 40% like people did in 2008. Clients with IUL didn't lose one dime in 2008 when the market went down. So I can use indexing to make money when the market's up but not lose when the market goes down. Check out videos on this channel about indexing. But at the end of the day, Roths don't blossom when you die. Uh, IUL does. My laser funds, if I died tomorrow in an accident, I'm 70. Uh, every million I would have would double to two million and transfer tax-free to my spouse, my kids, my grandkids, a church, a charity. People say, hmm, yeah, my Roth doesn't do that, but how much does that cost? And I go, well, nothing's free, but it doesn't cost me anything. It's coming along for the ride, being paid for with a minuscule portion of money that you're shelling out in unnecessary tax. You have to earn 15% to net 10 in a tax-deferred IRA or 401k. I only have to earn 11 to net 10. That 1% is the cost of the insurance that the IRS says has to be there in order for it to be tax-free, okay? So <clears throat> let's go back and talk about the big impact. When people finally retire and they have a million dollars saved, the three big dangers are taxes. If they pull out 7.5% a year, 75,000 a year, to not deplete their principal if they're only earning seven and a half. They're not netting seven and a half. They pull out 75, they're netting 50,000 in a 33% bracket. If I pull out 75,000 out of an IUL policy, I can do that without depleting principal based on actual history. I net 75. If you need 100,000 out of an IRA or 401k, okay, a year, you have to pull out 150,000, pay tax of a third 50 to net 100. A million dollar nest egg earning 10% would be totally drained dry in 11 years. Whereas an IUL policy, 
you pull out 100,000 a year, it's tax-free, you would still have your million bucks at the end of that 11 years. It is far superior. So <clears throat> the thing that is eating away while you're sleeping or you're retired and not working, taxes. Inflation, the current rate of inflation as of the recording of this episode, based on the CPI consumer price index is over 9%. Now folks, that will double the cost of living every eight years. But when they say the CPI is nine, I triple that because uh, the actual cost of gasoline has gone up 50 or 60%. Used cars, 20%. Food in the 15 to 20% range. They changed the way they calculate the CPI because they can't afford to pay social security recipients the real cost of living. So they actually compare the cost of maybe an eight ounce filet mignon steak last year to eight ounces of hamburger this year. So when they say the CPI, the inflation rate went up nine, you ought to double or triple that at a minimum. So <clears throat> from 2021 to 2022, the actual rate of inflation was far in excess of 15%. You know what most of our clients with IUL earned that year? 25%, 61%, even 158% because you have to link your returns to the things that inflate. I don't like inflation any more than you do, but it doesn't uh, hurt me, it helps me. So <clears throat> when taxes, inflation, and market volatility are eating away at your savings that will cause you to outlive your money, uh, I want you to be able to sleep without that erosion. That's why I strongly recommend you reposition assets out of the market, out of IRAs and 401ks using strategic rollouts, not rollovers. You can learn about it by reading my book and put it over into a portfolio of laser funds. And then you can sleep because nothing like taxes, inflation, and market volatility will be eating away at your hard earned nest egg. Does that make sense? So to learn more, claim your free copy of the book, The Laser Fund, simply go to laserfund.com or click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost. I'll pay for the book. I'll send out this 300 page book. It has all kinds of charts, graphs, explanations, 62 actual client stories on this side of the book. It's two books in one. And there's options in there. If you want to listen and learn, watch and learn, you can register for educational webinars that we hold on a regular basis, but you can even fill yourself in for an appointment at no obligation or cost to talk to an IUL specialist to see how a laser fund may benefit you so that you can sleep soundly when you retire and not outlive your money.